Pulling it in and out in a rough manner could damage the strap. Hi everyone, welcome to Watch Chat. Today we'll be chatting about the Bell & Ross BR03 Limited Edition Black Track. Before we begin, I would like to thank Bell & Ross for allowing me to check out their timepieces. This avant-garde design remains true to its heritage maintaining a circle in a square with four screws. However, the faceted ceramic case brings out a new form. Looking at the watch face up, you will notice an octagon bezel holding the flat AR-coated sapphire crystal. Nope, this is not a homage of the Royal Oak. But do you know what is it a homage of? The Blacktrack BT-06 motorcycle. In collaboration with the award-winning designer Sasha Lakik, I hope I didn't say that wrong, the BT-06 was jointly crafted by the designers of Bell and Ross and Lakik. I must say, the BT-06 is a stunning-looking superbike. It's such a cool-looking bike. It even has a pedestal to place the watch. Hmm, this reminds me of this. Anyway, more about the watch and less about the vehicle, perhaps? The unique case shape is made out of three layers, the bezel, the center, and the case back. Instead of using the slotted head screw, the black track uses a hexagonal head instead. The Lux here, however, uses a pin bars to hold the strap. The strap here is a black calfskin leather with black stitching, mimicking the saddles on the BT-06. The sides have a red latex-like material. The three-pin buckle is made out of stainless steel with PVD coating. The familiar closed case back here showcases rudimentary information of the watch, the limited edition number, and the profile of the BT-06. The workhorse moving this chronograph is the BR Caliber 301, an automatic movement based on an ETA 2894-2 movement, which generates sufficient horsepowers and torque for this beast. If you have enjoyed the channel so far, please hit that like, subscribe and bell icon to support the channel. It will really help. Thank you. The dial here is really something. We've got the matte black base that is vertically carved out to look like the cooling grill on the BT-06 with the Bell & Ross name printed on it in white. Then, we have a gasket looking plate here that is placed above it that forms the hour markers, minute track, the chapter ring, the window frame for the date, and the window frame for the subdials. The design shape and the brush surface of the subdials and its window frames is a reiteration of the headlights on the BT-06. The one on the right with the white tip hand is the second subdial and the one on the left with the red tip hand is the chrono minute subdial. To stay consistent with the theme, the chrono second hand is also in red, whilst the hour and minute skeletonized hand are in brushed metal. You're probably wondering why is there a counterweight on the minute hand? This is cleverly designed to show the Black Tracks logo whenever the minute and second hands counterweight overlaps with each other. Cool, hey? The tachymeter scale is printed on the black Riho in white. The chronograph function here is standard and it is not a flyback chronograph. The small date at the 6 o'clock position is printed in red on black. To adjust the date, you can either do a quick set or use the minute hand to adjust it. This hacks the second hand whilst the date starts tilting at 11.30pm and completes the turn at 11.55pm. Now, this brings me to the three things that I like and the three things that I find that it could be a negative. All reviews and comments are entirely based on my personal opinion and its premise on my personal preference and shortcomings such as small and weak reads. Positive remarks are not exaggerated and the negative remarks could just be me nitpicking. One, I like the unique case design. The slooping corners makes this watch a very futuristic timepiece. Two, 
To maintain the flow and the language of having a futuristic design, I like how the DAO uses different layers and different texture to remind us that this is a motorcycle watch. 3. I like the color scheme they use here. The black, red, white and steel color are cleverly scaled to ensure good legibility and to make sure that it is not polarizing for a watch this size. Yes, this size brings me to the first negative. I find this watch to be a little too big for my wrist. It doesn't scale well with me as it is a bit too thick. Secondly, the ceramic block here has some weight. It is a bit too heavy for my taste. Thirdly, do you remember the latex material I talked about on the strap? Let me jog your memory. This latex material, it tends to add some width to the strap a little, making it difficult to slide in the buckle. Pulling it in and out in a rough manner could damage the strap. Notwithstanding this, it is still a very cool looking watch. Oh, by the way, did I mention that this is also a limited edition watch, limiting it to only 500 pieces? At this price, I think this designer piece is a value for money. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, please like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to support me and I'll really appreciate and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.